These are simple farmer, rancher, herdsman type people. They've lost the ability to maintain. These are proud people. They do not walk around with their hands out. They're not asking people to give them anything. They have been marked for extinction and they're being persecuted and they're living in caves. And so the urgency is real. This is stage four famine right now and people are starving as we speak. Mid-South Viewpoint, a Christian news and information feature of Bot Radio Network 640 AM, discussing the news, views, issues, and concerns that affect our community. Join us now for today's edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. On our last program, we took you to the Nuba Mountains in Sudan and the atrocities taking place among the Nuba Mountain people. The genocide is taking place because of the North Sudan army that is bombing. The rockets are being fired into this area. Last time, we talked with Pastor Nasser of the River Nile Baptist Mission that's here in Memphis, and he has brought a member, Nabil, who is from Sudan also. We wanted to bring to you the information so that you can pray and that you can respond. Thank you so much, our Bot Radio Network listeners, for being tuned in to this very important time as we share about the Nuba people. Now, you're getting news reports lately because of the arrest of George Clooney, the actor George Clooney that took place recently there in Washington, D.C. at the Sudanese embassy, trying to draw attention to this horrible genocide that's taking place. Greg Spears, Dr. Greg Spears, is a church planting strategist from the Mid-South Baptist Association. Greg, it's good to have you back, along with Pastor Nasser and Nabil. Thank you so much for coming. Glad to be here. We had a lot we talked about last time. I felt like it's important to continue our conversation. We'll be repeating some of the things, but it's important that we let our listeners be aware of the things that are taking place in the Nuba Mountains in Sudan. Urgent, urgent crisis. These folks are in humanitarian crisis for. That means famine is real every day. People, men, women, boys, girls, old, young, they are starving. They're starving to death. As we said last time in our session, they have had their agricultural cycles destroyed. They began to bomb these people as of June last year, and they have been bombing them steadily since then. They have sent in armed combatants into the their villages to burn and disrupt, rape, and disperse the peoples. They're trying to drive them out and replace them with non-indigenous peoples so they can control the land where the oil reserves are. Somebody has said it like this, that these people have been targeted for three primary reasons. Number one, they are black. Their skin is black and not Arab and not light skin. And then number two, they are Christian primarily and not Muslim. Most importantly for the North, they sit on vast natural resources, particularly oil and pasture lands. And so that's what they want because that's what they need to sustain their livelihood in the North. And the North is being backed by Chinese government, putting in great amount of resources sources, providing uh, weapons. We talked about last time Chinese made rockets that were being fired from 25 miles away, destroying places. Now, many of our friends are familiar with Samaritan's Purse, the Franklin Graham ministry, son of Dr. Billy Graham, who is a humanitarian hero all around the world in times of relief. They had a, a mission there in the Nuba Mountains that was bombed, forcing them to move away from there. They had actually a Bible school. Is that That, right, Greg? That that is correct, and had graduated a whole class of uh, lay pastors in the area and had done a great job in literacy training, which is another big need. And and one of the things I want to talk about is where do we go after we work ourselves through this humanitarian crisis? And there is a tremendous need for literacy because of the nation being at civil war for decades. There are whole generations of people who have grown up and have no opportunity to really go to school. There's a tremendous need for us to follow behind the humanitarian efforts with uh, literacy training and to just help uh, stabilize their life by any other means that we can as a platform to plant churches amongst the Nuba peoples. The Nuba peoples were faithful for many years to stand in arm with southern Sudan for many years during the Civil War to fight against the Muslim-dominated dictatorship of the north. We've all heard stories of Darfur, and this is being repeated among the Nuba mountains. As of last year, as we said on our last program, a election took place. And there is an independent southern state now of Sudan 
that is primarily led by Christian leadership. The president is a follower of Jesus Christ. His cabinet, those who are, are working to form a new government. And so that's good news. We're excited to, to see what God has done there. And yet there are these people that are kind of like stuck between. When the new boundaries were drawn, it put the Nuba Mountains to the north of the new state instead of part of the new state. And so now, as we've talked about, they're being bombed, they're being killed, and these horrible things are happening. Right now, food is of dire concern, Pastor, and that's why you are spearheading a trip to take supplies. I think it's important, as you mentioned, Greg, we're not looking for people to give boxes of corn and wheat so we can carry over there. We're looking to get financial support because, Pastor, you're going to go, you're on your way pretty soon to take a trip to be able to purchase supplies for these Nuba Mountain people. Uh, yes, that is why it uh, will be very difficult for us to ship it back there. It costs more money and more time. You need at least two months and a half for supplies from here to reach to Mombasa. And then uh, from Mombasa to Uganda, from Uganda to South Sudan, and this is a long process. Then uh, the easy way is just to get like uh, finance support, and we can uh, supply this stuff uh, from Uganda or Kenya or Zaire, those uh, countries, they are bordered with the South Sudan. From South Sudan, from Juba capital of South Sudan to Nuba Mountain border, he is like one day and a half. That is more easy where we can make sure we can reach these people very soon. That is why we would like to get uh, financial support. The team that is going, we are going to give out food, we are going to pray with people, we are going to uh, send a message of love. They will see that there is people here in the United States, they love them and they pray for them. Their heart is with them. Pastor, you are with the River Nile Baptist Mission here that is a group of primarily Sudanese believers. There's other African nations represented in this congregation of believers, but this is a group of believers right here in Memphis, and there's also people from the Nuba people group there in Sudan that are actually here in Memphis. Yeah, exactly. We have uh, 50 or uh, more than 50, including the kids, Nubian here in Memphis. The majority, they are members of River Nile Baptist Church. We worship, we pray, we do our rich ministry. For those uh, non-Christian background, because of our language, we are speaking Arabic language, and then we have opportunity to reach the Memphis community, those they are speaking Arabic language, because the culture. We did great uh, ministry here. I want to thank those that was praying for us, for River Nile, to do this uh, ministry here in Memphis. I think it's important, too, that we bring out a point about this relief effort through the International Mission Board of the Southern Baptist, because those listening, you say, well, I'm not a Southern Baptist. You know, I go to a Methodist church or Presbyterian church. No, that's not the issue right now. The issue is a born-again follower of Jesus Christ coming together to help a brother in need and a sister in need, which is the Nuba people in Sudan. I don't think there's really better relief organization in the entire world than the International Mission Board of the Southern Baptist. They are like on the front line. You look at relief organizations, they probably are better organized and better utilize their resources than a lot of these other humanitarian groups that you hear about. I'm not trying to put anybody else down, but I just want people to realize the value when you give. Greg, you're part of this. You guys know what you're doing. Well, even here in our, our own nation, disaster relief efforts are always spearheaded and undergirded by just tons of volunteers and large amounts of resources that are given through our churches. Baptist Global Response is an international sort of disaster relief organization. That's what they focus on. Our World Hunger Fund is designated. 100% of whatever is given to that fund goes towards that need. So we have established a special fund here at the Mid-South Baptist. We've got about 160 or some odd churches and we're asking our churches and others to give, and it's designated for the Nuba People Relief. Nuba People Relief. That's N-U-B-A People Relief. So you can make checks or contributions. Uh, you can contact the Mid-South Baptist Association. Our secretary's name is Grace. Area code 901-373-6161. And we are at 6896 U.S. Highway 70 in Bartlett, Tennessee, 38133, if you would like to, to mail it there or drop by the offices and meet us so that you know who you're dealing with. But we're asking all of our churches to give to that specific relief fund. We establish a special line item in our budget, and this would be something that would be nonprofit. So, uh, This is a critical relief need. Time is of essence. That's why we're 
bringing you these programs here on Bot Radio Network, the Nuba People Relief. And, Greg, I want you to go ahead and give that number and the address for people to contact you. Give out again right now if you would. That's uh, area code 901-373-6161. Our secretary's name is Grace or Sharon, and that's the Mid-South Baptist Association, 6896 U.S. Highway 70, Bartlett, Tennessee, 38133. And we have, again, as an ambassador from Memphis, he's sitting here right now, Pastor Nasser, who will travel. When do you plan on leaving for this effort? The first week of April. That is what I will go ahead of the team that they are coming. Yes. Because there is many things need to be done in Uganda. We need to get license to park the food. We need to get permit to park the medicine. And then I will go to South Sudan to uh, apply for uh, tax exempt those stuff, we can cross the southern country with no paying tax, that we can save more money and we can just use it for food and for the supplies that we needed. The reason I will go ahead of the team that were coming for one week and then they will come found me there and then from there just we drop to Nuba Mountain. So you can work out the logistics of all of the planning and everything that's, that's uh, coming. Yes, yes, exactly. You know, this is crucial right now. And even in this new state of southern Sudan, we're not talking about the best roads. I mean, this is there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of prayer, Brother Greg, that needs to mm-hmm. take place here Most definitely. on this effort. And this is not just a, a, a short-term project. There needs to be prayers and consideration for a long-term support. Yeah, we're looking at a multiple-year partnership with not just Nasser but others that have returned there. As you mentioned, this is a new state. It is still in turmoil. There are still massive conflicts going on in South Sudan as the different tribes uh, try to negotiate their position in the new government. So one of the reasons that we're not going to be purchasing food, and I'm leaning on Pastor Nasser for this, in South Sudan is the cost of living there is on the same level right now as Tokyo because Mm -hmm. commodities are scarce and prices are high and there's a lot of competition. There are a lot of nations that are moving into already South Sudan because there are natural resources there, and they're establishing those first relationships of nation to nation. So this is a a very volatile time in South Sudan, so it's not really stable there. As you mentioned, roads, just the negotiating of getting permits (laughs) and making everything happen the way that the new government wants to happen. So Nasser is going ahead. We are sending in a follow-up team, and I would just say this. If there's a young man out there that's looking for an adventure, and we can't take a large team the first time that wants to go and see firsthand what we're talking about, then, man, this would be a great first trip. I would like to also say that when you return, Pastor, from the trip and some of those others that return on the trip, would you guys come back, give us some more reports so our listeners can be updated and know what took place? Can you do that? Uh, yes. Exactly. That is what we will do when, when we get back. We are going to uh, record and uh, have an interview with people in the camp. We can just bring all information to the American community, and they can see exactly what is going on. Well, we want to keep our Bot Radio Network listeners informed, and so you please do that, and you're always welcome here on these microphones. Nabil, you are Sudanese, is that correct? Yes, sir. You shared with us last time your passion and your heart. Can you tell us more about why you would like to see those listening help respond to this need, the Nuba people? Because what we heard on the ground, we still have relatives down there, a lot of them, and we call, we communicate with them. Do you have relatives there? Yes, I do. I do. And always, whenever they call, they call us about they are hungry. They don't have anything to eat because the rent season has passed. And they didn't plan because they were scared for planes bombing them. That's why they missed that chance. Nobody planned anything. Right now, they call and uh, they talk. They're hungry. They need help. They need help. They need help. They need help right now. Yes, they do. The financial gift of those listening going to this relief project for the Nuba People Relief is going, again, in the name of Christ, way to show the Nuba people that there are those in Memphis, Tennessee, that care and that love and come in the name of Jesus. That will be really a very great mission for uh, believers and our brothers in Memphis, uh, for us to take this opportunity and we can be the part of these groups that they are helping. It's not just about the food, but we are showing the love of Christ. Mm. And I remember when... uh, Christ, he was preaching, and then the disciples, they tell him, the people, they are hungry. Let them go, and they can uh, buy something from the village. And then Jesus told them, you give them to eat. 
And then they said, oh, no, we didn't have just a like couple of fish and, and, and bread. He said, you just give them. That is what we need people to do. We need to give even for what we didn't have. Yes. And I am believe that is going to be, the Lord is going to bless it, and it's going to be blessing to these people, and it will be great message. Because I want to show people that Christ has loved them. There is a brother in, in Jesus Christ. Uh, they are praying for them for many years, and they're suffering with them. Uh, even they are far away, but he said their heart is there with them in Nuba Mountain, because they are part. They are part of their is, is spiritual life. It's going to be great, great uh, ministry that we can do to the Nuba Mountain people. It's not just about the food. Listeners, you can help end the genocide by giving your support. We've been talking a lot about churches giving, planning in their budgets to give on this long-term basis, but we're speaking to individuals listening right now, too, that we need your part in this effort, Greg, and that might just be $25. Together, everybody giving something can make a difference. We were in a church, uh, Pastor Nasser and I just last week shared the need, and, and it was a very powerful and moving time. So many people in a small church, just about 105 people in the church, uh, that little church, just individuals coming together, gave $3,000. That $3,000 is an incredible amount of money when you start to buy corn and you start to buy medical supplies to distribute to families. So you're absolutely correct. It is not the amount. It is what we can all do together. And this is unprecedented time because the window, let me just say one more time, because of the disruption of the agrarian cycle of planting and harvesting that started in June of last year, the planting season was missed, and these people have consumed their seed corn, so they had no seed to plant. Even if they wanted to plant, now they've already eaten what they held back to plant for the next crop. So that time has come and it has gone and all of that food is gone. And because of the disrupted lifestyles, their animals have also been dispersed. These are simple farmer, rancher, herdsman type people. They've lost the ability to maintain. These are proud people. They do not walk around with their hands out. They're not asking people to give them anything. They have been marked for extinction and they're being persecuted and they're living in caves and so the urgency is real. This is stage four famine right now, and people are starving as we speak. So anything that anybody would like to give, again, we've established a special fund at the Mid-South Baptist Association, specific line item, NUBA People Relief. And you can give through that. And I'm sure there's other places. If you Google this, you're going to find all kinds of stuff. What we try to do for our folks is to tie this together with existing people in the area who have the organizational logistics structure to make this thing happen in a real-time way with integrity. So that's one thing that we're trying to get our people to understand. And that's what we're trying to get our Bot Radio Network listeners to understand right now over these past couple of programs sharing with Pastor Nasser about the Nuba people that are in the plight of as you mentioned, Brother Greg, in extinction yes, because of the horrible genocide that's taking place. Brother Nabil, I just can't imagine if I was on a phone call with a family member that said, can you help me? Or, or maybe they didn't even say that. Maybe they just said, I haven't had any food in three, four days. I don't have any enough food to feed my children. I would want to do something. I would want to respond if I had received a call like that. And we talked about the spiritual kinship that we share, brothers and sisters in Christ. And there's a need, and we need to respond to this need. Talk to your family members that share these stories, these sad stories of needing food and medical supplies. I'm sure there's people that have medical conditions, uh, Pastor Nasser, that need certain medicines. Yes. All the clinic that we have at Nuba Mountain right now, they are empty. There is no any kind of medication, even uh, the pain, the headache medication or anything of medication, people, they're running out of it because there is no way for supplies to come to the Nuba Mountain. And then we have many people that are injured and they are suffering. And then there is no way even for uh, whatever they can be given. Just they stay in their home because they can't go to the clinic or to the hospital. We have one hospital in the place they call a Kauda. But right now, according to the report, there is no any medication or anything can be done to these people. Even those that are in the hospital, just they spend their day and then they did because uh, there is no any kind of help. Imagine every day there is a 20 to 25 pump in many different villages and people, they get injured if they didn't die. Those that get injured, so there is no way they can go. They can go to north, they can go to south. And uh, if they stay in Nuba Mountain, there is no any help of medication. 
is something people they can't believe it, but uh, that is what is happening right now in Nuba Mountain. Yeah, I think it is sort of unbelievable. I mean, we're sitting here, we're talking about being in real-time communication with people who are actually in the area. And people are going, well, if they can have a phone, if they can talk, what they can't do something. Well, that's just the, the way we live today. This is the 21st century. You can have almost instant communication, international cell phones. This young man we mentioned in the last session, this Brian Boitene, he has a satellite uh, link up. George Clooney, they have the Sentinel satellite. They're actually monitoring the movement of military uh, hard hardware and groups within that country to say they're getting ready to bomb here now. They're getting ready to bomb there now. So we have the technology to actually see into this country and see what is going on there. But people need to respond because technology will not feed those people. Only food and best basic food. We're just asking for corn, rice. We're asking for aspirins and bandages. Those are the type of things we're talking about right now, just to sustain life until the diplomatic corps can come together, till the powers that be can come together and negotiate either redrawing this border or getting a sovereign state for the Nuba people. There's got to be a resolution ultimately for that. But right now, we must get humanitarian aid to these folks. And part of that, too, is drinking water. Yes. We didn't talk much about that, but that's still a very big need, too. Is that right, Pastor? Yeah. Yeah, that is really very big need because there is no water. People, they uh, they use the water, especially in summertime. Uh, they can walk like half of day, five hours, six hours to get water from somewhere else. And then they come back. You wake up six o'clock and you come back at three o'clock just to bring the water. That will be enough for one day. And then tomorrow you have to do the same thing. Sometimes when they went to get the water from the place that they would get it, there are many, many people. They have to wait and wait until they can get their chance to bring the water to their family. Imagine there is a children, young children, a newborn. They are in the home with no water and they stay for all days. And Sudan, as no one, is, uh, the temperature is very high, more than any country else. That is what people they are passing on right now. Well, friends, we have described the situation among the Nuba people there in Sudan and the, the desperate need for your help. Again, prayer is so important for the relief effort that's going on as uh, Pastor Nasser spearheads a trip coming up, as he mentioned, just in a couple of weeks here, 1st of April, to travel and work out some of the logistics of this trip. This is a, it's like a mountain trying to move, but a faith of a mustard seed, your faith, trusting God together, we can see this happen, uh, bringing the supplies into the Nuba people. Greg, a relief fund has been set up, and I want you again to give us the information on how we can address our correspondence and to be able to give support. Yes, it's specifically for the Nuba people relief through the Mid-South Baptist Association, you can contact us there at 901-373-6161. And our physical address is 6896 U.S. Highway 70, Bartlett, Tennessee, 38133. Just pray and give sacrificially. Now, Bill, do you have any closing thoughts as we complete this program? Anything you'd like to say in closing? Your help it will really help people of Nuba. I just urge you guys out there, if anybody just want to, with a little or with a small amount, any kind of amount, that it will help people. It will appreciate among Nubian people. Pastor Nasser, any closing thoughts from you? I would uh, like to uh, encourage those that are listening. The prayer is a key for everything. And it's a key for our mission. It's a key for peace in Nuba Mountain. I will encourage everybody, all the believers, all the church, to continue and pray for Nuba Mountain. God bless you, my friend. Thank you so much for what each of you are doing for Christ's kingdom and to help the people of the Nuba Mountains to uh, find relief, to find safety, and find some peace there. But we're praying that we know that God has to work in the hearts of those enemies that are fighting against them. We pray for them that they would come to a resolve and let these people live in peace and be able to take care of their families. But in the meantime, we need to respond. This is an emergency relief need, and this is a desperate need. Famine conditions are now among these people. They do not have the food they need to continue. You can help by your support. Greg, that address again, please. 6896 U.S. Highway 70, Bartlett, Tennessee, 38133, and that's the Mid-South Baptist Association. Make those contributions to the NUBA People Relief Fund. 
Our phone number is 901-373-6161. And you mentioned about you and Pastor Nasser speaking at a church recently. Would you be open if somebody would like for you to come and speak with their group? Could you come and share? I could. I am uh, currently in a situation where I'm preaching every Sunday at a certain church, but I could come on a Sunday evening or Wednesdays, and Brother Nasser will be here. He's already booked in a few churches, but he is open to go as well. Pastor Nasser, if somebody wanted to call you directly, could they do that? Yes, they can call me on my cell phone, 901-232-5371. 901-232-5371. And Bill, how about you? If somebody wanted to contact you and, and maybe share with you personally about things that you've shared today, could they contact you? Sure. My contact number is 901-409-7474. Anytime. Thank you. God bless you guys. That's all the time we have on this edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. We will keep you posted on the relief efforts of the Nuba people as it continues, and we do appreciate your prayer and visiting with us today on these last two programs here on Bot Radio Network. I'm Byron Tyler. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Mid-South Viewpoint. If you'd like to join the conversation, you can email us. Our address is wcrv at botradionetwork.com. This has been Mid-South Viewpoint, another Christian news and information feature from Bot Radio Network 640 AM.